to Arrakis desert planet. This is a precarious time. The water of life. Long live the fighters! I wish. But yeah. Hello folks, welcome back. We're on the one. This is a darn big knife. It's a better knife than, I don't know. Better knife than what they use in the movies. That's right folks. Again, kids don't play with knives. Yes, we're on the one. It's my boat survival knife. I'm the one, the only, I am a ho bo tom Yes, now I am fully revealed to be who I am. And, you know what, this is the rare movie review. Yes, I just came back from watching Dune, part two. And wow, because here's my ticket. Yep, you can all see CMX Luxury Theaters. My movie ticket. I'll tell you what, this water of life was probably more potent than what they had in the movies. But yeah, that disappointed. Um, very quickly, today's gonna have a couple points, you know what? So let's get to the good footage. Check out me on my journey to the movie theater. Hello folks, welcome back. From the one, the only, I am Hobo Tom and here I am at the CMX Theaters in Daytona Beach. I think this is going to be a packed theater. I'm glad I got my ticket early. Hear that or else it's a bunch of people here still with Bike Week. I'll find a nice spot kind of away from all the traffic. I don't even care about walking. Because it's honestly, oh, this is a good spot right here. So I'm here to watch the movie Dune Part 2 and show you a little bit of what it looks like inside the theater. So just hold on. I have my candy, because I have my illegally broadened candy. As always, my good and plenties, that's important. Okay, so here we go, a very quick preview of the movies now showing. So there's a little bit of the inside of the theater. And they have the palm trees all lit up. And this is a beautiful Daytona One Plaza. Let's see here, this is the most amazing movie theater. Primarily because not only does it have its pizza and snacks, but literally a full bar. And so you see all this. It's a copster's kitchen and bar. And literally a full bar. So a very quick look at what's coming soon. Yes, nice, nice kind of drive. Check out the theater itself. quick view of what the theater actually looks like. My seat's up there somewhere. Now and now, a little snippets of some coming attractions. Turn a whole family into millionaires. To have a fashion line, a foundation. One today. Thank you. I mean, it wasn't even like tennis. It was an entirely different game. They called themselves Ghostbusters. According to these hacks, they saved the world. No eyewitnesses. And who is found to carry the torch? The sin.
think the first one, yeah, it was about tennis. Second one is Ghostbusters. I'll tell you what, I am so looking forward, more forward towards Ghostbusters than this movie. So now let's get to the meat or desert of the matter, the movie itself, Dune. Third comment. The battle for Arrakis took everyone by surprise. There were no witnesses. The Harkonnen operation was perpetrated overnight, without warning or declaration of war. By morning, the Atreides were no more. All died in the dark. And the Emperor said... Nothing. Since that night, my father has not been the same. In the shadows of Arrakis lie many secrets. But the darkest of them all may remain. The end of House Atreides. This is a very quick snippet in free use policy, and I'm allowed to do that on YouTube, mainly because, well, yeah, if you show 30 seconds as a review, you can tell people kind of what you're doing, and you set the stage for things. Oh, let's talk about this movie. It started off good and true to the book series. It kind of picked up where it left off where remember it left off Paul killed Jamis they were taking his body back to siege Tabor um, they pick this up they pick it up right there they're being ambushed by the Harkonnens you see the body all of the Harkonnens are there I do like the fact that they went they hearkened back yeah hearken Harkonnen they hearkened back to the original 1984 version where the Harkonnens were all in kind of like black suits. So I do appreciate that. Um, they had the last guns. Again, you can't use shields on desert because that attracts worms. And they used the big either knives or short swords, depending on what you call them. Um, Gladius style sword or Viking Ulrich, I think, sword it's known as, but yeah, so it starts off there and it goes a little bit back and forth. Another thing I liked is that they harken back to the diaries of Princess Oran, um, the year 10. Ten 10,918 or whatever year it was. I forget. I can always go back there. Oh, am I actually pointing to the right shelf? Wow, I got lucky. Right there. The whole Dune series. Right there if I really wanted to find out the year. Yeah, they kind of did that. Which, again, harkens back. <laughs> Harkonnen. Harkens back to the original movie. Which is pretty cool. Because if you remember, in the extended cut, you have Princess Elrond... Um, I think they showed her kind of shadow casted and of course the voice saying in the year whatever uh, great houses this is their story so it was, again it was pretty cool she's playing there Christopher Walken looks like a good emperor nowhere nearly as imposing though as Jose Ferrer um, man I hate to say it but Christopher Walken is getting old he looks like an older emperor. Um, so it goes through whole, all that. Uh, all Paul's training. He gets introduced to the siege. 
he learns the ways of the desert. His mother becomes the Reverend Mother after drinking the water of life. And the mother really sets, again, the tone of this movie because they have the entire Bene Gesserit um, lore um, how they seeded various populations with a religion um, in order to control it. I know it's called something in the books. I forget, honestly, what it's called. I forget what it's called, and I'll have to look it up later. I know there's a very specific term Frank Herbert and his books use to call that. Um, again, based on the Orange Catholic Bible. Again, these are the Zen, Zen Sunni people, um, which is an offshoot of the Buddha Islamic religion. Again, that happens 10, 10, I'll say 11,000 years in the future. Uh, there, there's a little back and forth. You see the beginning of Fader Ra'utha. I do like this Fader Ra'utha. I didn't think I would like him as a character. So mainly I'm used to Sting. The musician. Not Sting! But yeah, Sting, the musician. From the police. Was he with the police? I forget now. I think so. I'll have to do some research. But Sting, the musician. Again, he was the original Fader Ra'utha. This one was kind of meaner, more sadistic, more in line with the book. They did mention, again, he had his gladiatorial fights. They did not drug the one Atreides. Said, hey, the Baron said, you know what? This means this means you're the man. So you kill an undrugged slave, an un undrugged Atreides, which, again, they do, again, mention in the books. Where they deviate from is the mentioning of Count Hasmir Fennering, who was betrothed, I forget if they were married or not, but his concub, actually they weren't married because Margot Fennering was a countess, and for some reason she sleeps with Fader Ra'utha and conceives a daughter. I know that Ben Jesuits, they can control body metabolism and all that, and they talked all about the weakness. Again, they don't get into that in the original. Um, when you get into the book, The Sisterhood of Dune, and what's the other one? Hunters, Sandworms, The Road, Hosea Conan. Yeah, in, in one of the books, I think it was The Sisterhood of Dune. And a little bit to the Duke of Caladan. They get into a little bit of manipulation of men. And how they've mastered and how they uh, do all the bloodline stuff. And how it's all the training from Wallach 9, which is the Ben and Chester home planet. Which was not mentioned in this movie. Again, kind of disappointing. Because I forget if... Wallach 9 was mentioned in the first film or in the book. Again, I'd have to go back to that. But yeah, so they get into that. Um, they keep Raban on Dune for a while. He does have to fight the Fremen, of course. Paul Moadib takes control of the Fremen forces. Leads the rebellion against the beast Raban, who Batista does an amazing job with. I think all the Harkonnens are pretty well depicted. For what they are and or should be. Again, Baron Harkonnen was great. He had his uh, whole medical thing hooked up to him this time. A little bit different. Uh, so, Raban loses control. The Baron, Baron Vladimir Harkonnen himself removes him from control. Puts uh, Fader out. Fader out says, you know what, we're just going to use good old fashioned artillery. We're going to bomb the heck out of people. The Baron appreciates that. Um, Raban has to kiss the foot of Fader Ra'utha, which I don't think ever happened in the book. Raban was more of a badass. And just really more sadistic, openly sadistic, than Fader Ra'utha was. Uh, what else? Then, of course, Paul goes to the south where he has the, the visions of him leading an army and people starving. I hope there's not a third movie. There's been teases of it. Based on this movie and this movie's reviews, there probably won't be. Mainly because it 
Like, I heard people saying, this movie sucked. And trust me, the movie theater I went to was, like, empty. Like, I was the only one there. In fact, if I brought my girlfriend, me going down on her would probably have been the most entertaining part of that whole movie process. Besides watching the Ghostbusters trailer. Um, what else? Yeah, and then they get, and then of course, they use the atomics. They fire the atomics. I do like the fact that they do mention that every house has atomics. And we have this, the personal store, all 92 uh, atomic warheads. I do like that reference. That was, again, in a couple of the books back there. I forget. Kind of the prelude, kind of the prelude to Dune books are now becoming a little bit popular. The direct prelude. Uh, Duke of Caledon and the other one there, Lady Ka Lady of Caledon, or Paul of Dune. Was Paul of Dune there? I don't know. Yeah, one of them. Yeah, they do mention Family Atomics and how they, they had all 92 Atomics kind of shifted there. Because remember, that is against the Great Lens, Lens Ride Convention to use Atomics. They use it on the shield wall, which I guess kind of surpasses it or is a loophole around it because you're not using it on people you're using it on on things Main, mainly the rock wall um, the emperor ship look kind of cool again you can see the sandstorm battering the shields kind of nice effect christopher walken he's just old did not make a good looking emperor i do like the look of ulran his daughter that was pretty close to the original 1984 version. The blonde, shortcut, uh, pixie hair. Her with all the metal chain link was, was I guess, appropriate. Uh, the Sadaka were there with long swords protecting the Emperor. Paul shows up, the men's left of the Emperor. He and Fade are with the fight. Paul says, you know what, call them off. And what I didn't like necessarily was the fight scene between... And, and things leading up to it. Again, Paul drinks the water of life just like I did. Um, he drinks some of the water of life along with the Chinese tear. That revives him. It was okay. I mean, I could understand it. And it did bring things together. I don't remember reading about that in the book, per se. There is some poetic license there, so I can deal with that. What got me was the fight scene, because it was kind of anticlimactic. They say in a knife fight, someone dies and then the other person normally goes to the hospital. So Paul gets stabbed by his own blade by Fade Routh. Um, Fade Routh, again, it's not a mortal wound. Kind of inside. So again, it kind of misses all vital stuff. Um, Fade, kind of like the Indian knife trick where it's up in the shoulder. So it's away from the heart. And that would have hurt, as that hurt like anything. Not necessarily a fatal wound. However, Paul stabs him pretty much and ends that fight. Uh, again, it didn't show the Emperor's poison blade. They'd rather really use the blade. They had to call off the Landsrad. What got me was the ending. And it was kind of disappointing in the fact that it ended the way it began through the eyes of Chani. So after the fight, again, Princess Elrin says, yes, marry me, you get the throne. And I know the Emperor eventually goes into exile on Solus the Secondus, which is kind of like the Imperial prison planet. And Chani just left. And I was waiting for the line from the mother saying, that Elrond will never know his tenderness. It's always and it's something to the fact that Elrond will never know his tenderness, but the concubines get get all the nookie. Which, which essentially is what she said. I forget the exact line. I'm gonna have to go back into my library and figure out what the exact line was. And concubines get all love. Empress is just there. She's gonna know nothing and be writing memoirs and knitting somewhere. Because, it's, again, the last scene shows her writing a sand, uh, calling a sandworm to leave. She gets upset. I don't know, lovers quarrel. And then 
Of course, the rest of the Lions Rod is upset that Paul took over Arrakis. And then he just says, yes, show them all paradise. And again, very Islamic jihadist way. Again, that's the way you go to war, the jihad. And yes, you kill all the people that don't believe. Kill all, kill all the non-believers or they convert. And that's how it ended. It ended with Stilgar um, taking control of the Saruka ships and going off to fight the Lanzarad. Well, Chani's in the back, Chani's on top of a sand dune calling a sandworm. She is the jilted lover. And that's the way it ended. And I'm like, no. Alia wasn't born yet. Um, Paul's mother was still pregnant. I think in the books, I know in the movie Alia was born. In the books, St. Alia the Knife, because she actually does kill Baron Vladimir Harkonnen. In the books, not Paul. I don't know if they don't want kids committing murder. Maybe being in the 80s was just being cool. I don't know. You could get away with a lot. You could get away, get away with a lot more in the 80s and 90s. Who knows? But for the most part, that's Dune. Um, kind of disappointing. It was. I think the movie started at nine. Started fairly promptly. A whole bunch of previews. Went to eleven fifty. So it's almost say two and three quarter hours, two hours, 40 minutes, something along the line. Um, I'll tell you what, I hate to do it guys. This was a can of soup movie. One cool thing was that they were giving away posters. So I get, I guess the beekeeper poster, they were random posters. You know what? Anything free. <laughs> this became a $9 price. Oh, yeah. Also, I went on Tuesday. I didn't realize they upped their prices. Normally, the movies used... Years ago, to go on a Tuesday was like $5. Then it went up to 7 Now it's up to $9. And that's for a Tuesday kind of off-day movie. If I had to pay probably the whole 12 to 50 I don't, I don't even know how much a movie is. That tells you how, how often I go. But yeah, if I had to pay the full price, I would have been really disappointed. And that's the movie Dune Part 2. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Let me know if you like this video or not. I'll be posting this video shortly to get some, do some editing work, find some pictures and stuff. To thank everyone for watching. Please like, share.